Hey YouTube, uh, Phantom Outlaw here again. Sorry about that. My battery died and I had to let it do some recharging for a couple minutes there. My uh, my apologies on that. Alright, so picking back up where I left off, I hope, one of the things we were looking at was the big difference in size. Certainly with the magazine wells, you can see the width of the grip. Pretty substantial. We had talked about the fact that the full-size MMP has the tool uh, for the sear deactivation lever as well as whatever else we need a tool for that's removable. It holds in the back strap. The shield does not. The, that's a fixed part of the of the grip. There's this, this is hollow right there. There's no tool. Now it does have the sear deactivation lever, but um, you can just either use your finger or a pen tip or any other type of a device you may want to use for that. So this does not have the tool that the full size has. All right, so let's talk about it real quickly here. I think we're finishing up on a couple of other differences. And one of the things we may have noticed on this side is right there. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the uh, full size M&P, you know that the, a manual safety is an option. Uh, many people prefer that, some people don't. Uh, on the shield, it is not an option. They all come with the safety. Now, if that's going to change in the future, who knows? Um, but it is a safety. So let me show you real quickly. Again, safe gun. When we activate the safety, you cannot, I'll show you here, you can't pull the trigger. It stops right there. If we deactivate it, it's easy to pull the trigger. All right, let's talk real quickly about this manual safety and what it means or what it doesn't mean. I have seen uh, some people say that one of the reasons that they don't like it because this is a compact gun that whenever they're trying to accentuate it here, they're, uh, it, it's, I guess it's too far back in their thumb. If you're thinking along the lines of a 1911, it's a similar concept, but it's smaller and it's certainly not the same thing. Um, I've seen someone else comment that they don't like it and they wouldn't get this gun because it's too easy for it to turn itself on and off. That's not true. I saw someone else say that they had one uh, that he carried in his gym bag uh, for his concealed carry and there were a number of times that he pulled it out of the bag and the safety was in a different position than he had left it just from being carried against clothes and whatnot in his gym bag. Maybe he got a faulty uh, safety on his. I don't know what to tell you, but I will tell you this. And I'm going to show you as best I can here. If you listen, you can hear it. It's very audible. It's a very positive, solid feel. And I don't know if there's a way to measure the, the, the pounds pressure needed for this, but I'm telling you right now, I don't know if you can tell. I'm going up against that. Just harder, harder, harder. There. That took a lot of pressure going against these serrations. That took a lot of pressure to activate that that safety. Um, so here's the way I, that I would present it to you. If you're like me and you are not a fan of a manual safety, then just leave it off. Leave it in this position. I don't know how well you can tell this. It really barely sticks out at all from the side of the frame here. It barely sticks out. It's there. It does stick out. I'm trying to give you some different angles on this, but it is it's it's almost almost flat there. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Hopefully you can see it well enough. But it does not stick out so that it's going to get hung up or caught on anything. Um, so that's not a problem whatsoever as far as I'm concerned. All right, let's go over some more of the pros we were still caught up on. The uh, it is an M&P, so it does have the M&P ergonomics. I mentioned that in other videos, which is one of the big reasons why I chose the M&P full size for my IDPA matches. I just like the feel of the M&P, the ergonomics, the grip angle, the everything about it is a much more comfortable feel. I'm going to put the full size magazine in here, or the full size, the extended magazine in here. Again, and also we're going back to the Talon Grips, another little plug for them, I guess. Uh, you can get the, it comes with one wrap for the bottom of this magazine. You can see the difference, not much of a difference. I'll get more on that here in just a moment. And you can also buy additional ones. I think they're like a dollar ninety a piece or something like that. I have a couple extra magazines. I bought a couple additional ones. But with this magazine in, 
I get a full grip. It's a little bit tight, but I get a full grip on the, the grip of the gun. It makes it a very natural point for me, very comfortable. Even with the smaller magazine, you can see we're going to lose about the width right there. It's not much, but with that, if I were to try to squeeze my pinky on, it doesn't fit. I'm not even going to try. So I put it underneath, which is pretty standard for most of these compact guns, you're going to hold it with the pinky underneath. Now, I will say that of the two, my wife much prefers the extended one. She feels that it's a much better, more comfortable grip for her, even though she has a smaller hand than me. It is what it is. All right, now, one other thing I want to talk about here real quickly, if we're going to talk about some pros and cons. Um, pro, you get this longer magazine, you get an additional round in it, you get additional purchase for your pinky. Now, this one has a talon tape on it. This one does not. This one has a little slide. This is how they all come. And this piece can come off or ride up or down. I will tell you this, if it's sitting like this and you go to put your magazine in, you're gonna have to really force it home. More to the point, what if it's only up maybe just a little bit? You can put your magazine in, but it won't be seated far enough to put a round in the chamber. So you have to really bump it in. So, here's a concern that people have. Oh, well, this just slides all over the place. Well, let me tell you again, not in my experiences. If you push here on the end and here, you can kind of rock it back and forth. It can happen. Not accidentally. Now, I'm not saying that under no circumstance could this not bounce around like that and happen like this in a purse, in a pocket, in a bag. It certainly can. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying you look at some of those videos where people just say, oh, look, it just slides up and down. It does not slide up and down. You have to rock it. And you have to give it some type of a, of a push. Now, let's go back to the talon tape. This more or less solves that concern, which is good and bad. It solves it because it's, it's, this is tape. It, it's, both pieces are now stuck together. I've seen other people use glue to glue that piece in place. That works also. Here's the only downside. With that in place, you cannot disassemble the floor plate of your magazine to clean the inside of the magazine. All right, how often do we actually clean the insides of our magazines? Well, I can speak from my own personal experience. I do it, but not very often. It does happen, but obviously not nearly as often as you're gonna clean your firearm. So the fact that these tapes cost less than $2, or call it $2 if you want to, a piece, buy a couple extras and once twice a year depending how often you shoot take it off clean out the magazine take off the magazine apart clean it out put it back on put a new piece of tape on it if you glue all this especially people using super glue you're really limited in your options there so something to think about as far as the pros or cons go i mentioned that because it has been brought up by a number of other people some other pros price the price on these is very favorable, especially if you want to compare it to the uh, M&P 9 Compact and certainly to the Glock 26. I uh, have seen these a number of different prices over the last six or eight months or so as high as $500 or more, dollars, as low as $370. And I think, uh, for me, it was right around $379, I think it was, $369 or $379. So I, I shopped around. So you can get it for much less than $400. Typically, you're looking right around $399, $409, $419. So call it right around the $400 mark. It does come with two magazines, one of each size. Extra magazines, uh, $35, $36, $38 or so, depending where you get them from. I will say that uh, they're not as easy to come by as the... Glock magazines. It's not as bad as the uh, M&P full-size magazine crisis, for lack of a better term, that we had about a year or so ago. Um, but you can find them, both in the seven-round and the eight-round capacity. Uh, reliability. Uh, now, this particular model, as I said earlier, has only been out since 2012. It's uh, a few years younger than the full-size M&P line. Um, not a whole lot, though. So, But anyhow, track record-wise, they seem to be pretty solid. They had an issue a year or so ago with, and I can show you, but mine does not have it, so it really won't matter. But this little bar, I'm trying to show you the best way here, this little bar right here, when you, when you pull your trigger, see it rises up? Apparently there was an issue with the original models for a very brief time. I guess it was only a couple weeks 
worth of production from what I understand that there was an issue when they made those that when you pulled the trigger that stayed up now you don't really notice it with the trigger as much when you notice a trick like that you don't really see that it's happened but if that doesn't reset itself then there's a safety issue well that they very quickly resolved that and Smith & Wesson uh, did honor any type of warranty work and they um they certainly they were, they were more than happy to, to replace it for people but anyhow that's the only issue that I'm aware of as far as both the 9 and 40 line goes now another issue that's come out uh, rumor wise anyhow for the 40 is that for the shield 40 uh, there have been a few instances I guess for with the plus P plus round I believe uh, it has uh, not worked as designed and caused some damage uh, so be aware of that now does that mean that the 40 caliber shield is unsafe and you should not get it no that's not what I'm saying I don't know enough about this to form an opinion one way or the other I will say this um, when I was deciding on which one of these I wanted to go with between the shield the 9 compact and the Glock 26 I also considered the shield 40 caliber um, the 40 caliber round obviously is a little bit more powerful a bit more stopping power etc etc again I'm not getting into a caliber war here um, but with the progress that cartridges have made over the years uh, the a full power 9 millimeter round today certainly exceeds what they were doing 10 or 20 or 30 years ago so the big debate between 9 and 40 is not as big of a debate now as it was before that being said I was still thinking about the 40 because I just feel a bit more comfortable with the more powerful round you do give up one round capacity in the magazine so instead of being 7 and 8 it is 6 and 7 so you lose one round capacity but you get the more powerful round however with the more powerful round in a smaller frame gun you're going to have more felt recoil you're going to have uh, a harder time reacquiring a target etc uh, etc et everything associated along those lines so because of that um, I decided to go with the nine millimeter again the bigger the biggest thing there is uh, the the and I, I hate the term snappy round the 40 is a snappier round than the nine when you get a smaller frame and a smaller lighter firearm you're going to feel that snappiness more readily than you would otherwise I have the full size 9 and the full size 40 in the M&P I like to shoot both of them I don't have any problems with the snappy round and the full size at all with the smaller one it was just a little bit more of an issue and if you're gonna if this is a gun that you're trying to bet your life on the last thing you want to do is be in a bad situation because you had a harder time reacquiring a target because the guns bouncing around in your hand at least that's my two cents worth I'm a big strong guy I'm not afraid of that that's not my point the point is that was part of my decision making process all right moving on uh, again some couple of, last couple of the pros concealability because it is smaller than both the compact and the Glock 26 it is an easier firearm to conceal whether it's an inside the waistband an outside the waistband holster um, in your pocket it's a little bit big for a pocket gun but it could work that way depends how big you are and how big your pockets are certainly but it could work that way um, and you know concealability wise I think this rates better than both the compact and the Glock 26 um, and the fact that you've got a couple of choices in magazines you've got two of them um, and the way that I would the way that I do it and the way I would recommend is for concealed carry there you go smaller profile this is what you're carrying the bigger magazine with the one additional round have that as your backup magazine have this be in your pocket or your bag or your purse or your knapsack or on your belt or your par personage whatever the case is but if you're looking for full concealability this combination to me seems to work the best at least that's my two cents on that all right a couple of cons and this kind of uh, sandwiches with what we were just talking about the biggest con is for or, or negative on this conceal I'm sorry magazine capacity the fact that this is a seven or eight round mag welcome back YouTube Phantom Outlaw here again I apologize the batteries died again so we're gonna try to wrap this up here pretty quickly because I'm not sure exactly what's going on all right what do we have going on in front of us right now in this wrap up three different handguns we've already looked at the shield we've already looked at the full-size M&P in between is the Glock 19 so the reason I have this out is again just to compare sizes empty magazine safe gun all right so the reason we want to look at these is to show the difference 
between the width, the height, the length, the size of the grip, the size of the magazines. There's just a lot of different things we can look at here. Um, double stack versus single stack. That's why this is 1.2 inches wide. This is 0.95, so it's, or 1.18 actually, and 0.95. Um, and if you want to throw into consideration, just for comparison, we've got the full size m and I did not get out the Glock 17. It wasn't a need for that. I was the only reason I have the full size m and is for comparison's sake. And the reason that the Glock 19 is here is because I felt that would be um, a good comparison in reference to the fact that I already talked about that I had considered it as, as one of my references. So the 19 is bigger, noticeably bigger, than the shield. So we can see exactly what it is that was going through my mind as far as size wise. I just wanted to show that before the, uh, the battery died again. Alright, so where we were in terms of the review was wrapping up. We talked about it, just a couple of the cons. The fact that we're giving up some magazine capacity. Um, that's a trade-off you're going to have to decide on your own if it's worth it or not. Uh, also, I mentioned the minor issue that has been reported on a very limited basis with the Shield 40 caliber as far as the Plus P Plus um, Underwood ammo, I believe it was, that was having some issues. Don't know if that's a widespread issue, don't know if that's anything to be concerned about, but it's something that I have read and you probably will too if you're looking at that. So anyhow, just the last couple of things to talk about. Um, with the few minor changes that I have made to this, again, we're looking at the sights and the grip. Those are the only things I've done differently uh, for, from a stock gun. Stock and non-stock. Really not much different. Um, I'm really happy with this firearm. Uh, it's a fun gun to shoot. It's uh, The recoil is almost non-existent. Not quite the same thing. I will admit, when I'm shooting the full-size 9mm, heck, even when I'm shooting the Glock 19, um, the extra weight that is there for the full-size gun uh, it help, definitely helps absorb what very little recoil there is, but that's not to say anything bad as far as the shield goes. I like the tape on there. It gives you a little bit better purchase power. Um, again, under ideal circumstances, that's really not necessary. But if you're ever using your concealed carry weapon, uh, it's probably not going to be under ideal circumstances if you're in a life or death situation. So you want to make sure that uh, losing a good grip is the last thing you have to worry about. That's why I went with the Talon rubberized grip. Um, personal preference. Uh, magazines, again, we've talked about the different size magazines. Uh, I think that's a, a, a something to be aware of. You've got some options out there. Do you want to go with an eight round magazine? Or a seven round magazine. Do you want that extra, not even a quarter of an inch or so, maybe it's right around a quarter of an inch hanging down? Um, depends what you're, where you conceal carry, it really does. But overall, the MP Shield, uh, fantastic gun, available in both nine and 40. Both of mine are in nines, that's what I'm happier with. Um, I really don't have a whole lot of, uh, of other things to add to that. If you've got any questions, as always, please drop me a line. I have received quite a few. Uh, comments and the feedbacks and some of the other videos and people asking questions and I do appreciate that and I will get back to you as, as quickly as I can on those. Again, I am not an expert. I don't cl claim to be an expert, but I do have uh, a lot of hands-on time with uh, the guns that I'm talking to you about. So I can give you some real-world uh, experiences that, I, that I've dealt with. I also, again, I'm not going to go and show you uh, the targets that I shoot at because that would be an indicative uh, sign of of my good or bad shooting, uh, not so much the guns. Um, as far as I can tell, the gun again is still more accurate than I am. I haven't had any real issues. But again, my results shooting at a paper target are my results. That doesn't mean you'll have the same years, maybe worse or probably better. Who knows? The point is, um, it's reliable. It's 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 accurate. It's easy. As far as taking it apart, it's the same as the full size shield. Really, everything works out the same. I'm not going to break it down for you because there's tons of videos out there on how to do that as well. Um, but if you're looking for an option for concealed carry and the shield is one of the ones you're considering, um, I definitely give it a, you know, a, a very positive review. Um, it's not the smallest one out there, but it certainly is not the biggest one for the, on the subcompact line. 
I think it's a very good choice. Get out to the range, like I've always said before. Go to a local gun range if they have them to rent. Rent one of these, or find uh, maybe uh, somebody that you know. Maybe maybe your your buddy has one of these, or who knows who. But if you get a chance, get a get a few magazines uh, downrange experience with these, and decide on your own. I think you're going to find that they are a very comfortable gun. Um, read the videos, uh, read the reviews out there, watch the videos, and see what other people have to say. And if you see something negative in one, or even positive in one, don't necessarily buy that as the be-all end-all until you see that same comment show up again and again and again. Just because I say it's good doesn't mean it's, that it's good. But the fact that I think you're going to see probably many, 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 many more times uh, reviews that are very positive than actually I've only seen a couple negative reviews on this and they're really not even negative but um, so that's what I would look for the manual safety is something that you're gonna get, see some comments on but again I'm here to tell you right now it takes a pretty good push to activate and deactivate that um, so don't let that be a deterrent for you if you don't like it just don't actuate it so um, really, that's the one thing that seems to pop up the most as far as things that, are, that people are not happy with. So, again, if you've got any comments, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. I do appreciate everyone's uh, time to watch the video, and I do appreciate your subscribing if you have chosen to subscribe. Again, much appreciated. Hope you're having a great day. Take care.